Hello folks and welcome to another video. Hope this one finds you safe and well. Welcome to what will probably be the start of yet another series on this channel. Just because we can and well I grow I grow tired of doing the same thing for too long folks. So you're gonna get something a little different today. You've joined me this morning, early morn, see the sun rising there in the east. For a flight in the aircraft on thy screen, the Britain Norman BN2 Islander, the black box, black box, it is early in the morning folks, black box simulations Islander. I haven't flown this one for a little while, so I thought it's time to go flying in it. I actually enjoyed flying it. The flights I have done. So bring that out of the hangar and do something a little different. Go somewhere different that I haven't been um, in the sim that I can recall anyway. And I certainly haven't posted a video. So we're going to do that. As I said, a start of a new series. I'm going to follow a road. Yes, that's what I said. I'm going to follow a road. Welcome to the new series that I call... I follow roads or IFR for short you see what I did there let me show you the flight plan here we are right uh, in little nav map we're back down under again folks I can't stay away for too long my home country and my home state the state of uh, Queensland we're in uh, sort of central Queensland today and we've got a quite a complex sort of flight plan 18 legs of it um, following a highway that originates in the city of Gladstone here on the coast. Beautiful Gladstone. Well, I think it's beautiful. I, I do have some personal connection with Gladstone. Spent some quality time there back in the day. Well back in the day before it all boomed. Shout out to you if you happen to hail from or currently reside in Gladstone. I haven't... I don't think I've been back since I, uh, since I lived there, so... I don't know what it's like. My guess is that it's changed. It's certainly got more expensive, that's for sure, but what hasn't? We're going to follow a road um, originates in Gladstone and ends in a little place over here in the bush called Springshaw. Springshaw. And that road is known as the Dawson Highway. The Dawson Highway. Named, of course, after Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Titanic, Jack Dawson. Hey, how lucky is that bastard? He got a bloody highway named after him in Queensland, of all places. And he got to have a bit of How's Your Father with Katie Winslet. And probably got paid an absolute mint for that film. So life's pretty good if you're bloody Leo DiCaprio, isn't it? And yes, folks, I am an idiot. Right? <laughs> I know it's not named after him. But if you want serious simming, go to another channel. <laughs> anyway... Today's journey will take us from Gladstone via a whole bunch of waypoints, following the road, kind of hugging the road as best we can, right? At low level, um, our first kind of waypoints there at Calliope, town of Calliope, then Wooderson, and we've got quite a long drive, a long fly down to Mount Alma. Um, what's this place called? Dumgree. Did I get that right? Dumgree? Dumgree. Continuing along, um, down to, well, that's just a... Bloody random waypoint by the looks of it. Gives us a turning point, does it? Probably. There's a bloody big hole in the ground there. It might give you some idea about what happens in this part of Australia, folks. Um, and then, yeah, down to Billawila, or affectionately known as Billow, to the locals. And then a right dog leg following the road. Banana. Yes, there is a place called Banana in Queensland, of course, there would be. Across some more holes in the ground. Um, we're going to make a stop here at Mara North. Uh, now there is actually another another strip down uh, this way, this one here, being the main sort of Mara Airport. But I'm going to stop at Mara North. The Mara, not Mura, Mara, is how the, the locals pronounce it. And then we continue our journey um, overhead, uh, or sort of adjacent to Roundstone. Continuing across, forgive the zooms in and out, folks. What's this place called? Uh, Bohinia. Bohinia. 
don't think I've ever heard of Bahinia before. They've got a state school. Shout out to the kids of Bahinia. Uh, then continuing our journey uh, overhead Rolston uh, and then landing at our destination being the town of Springshaw. Got about 206 nautical miles, so it'll take us a little while in the Islander. She doesn't get along too quickly, an hour and 34 according to uh, little nav map. And we're going to do this at low level VFR, four and a half. Gives us plenty of, uh, we can actually go lower than that. It's still clear terrain, but we'll go four and a half. Um, yeah, following the road. That's the, uh, the plan, folks. I'll get us started and on our way. All right, so lined up from way 1-0 Gladstone, folks. I don't think Gladstone gets a lot of love in the flight sim content creation space, so there you go, Gladstone. Someone loves you. The old fella. I did enjoy my time in Gladstone, special time in my life. Apart from that week that I was violently ill. <laughs> the rest of it was, uh, was very nice uh, indeed. And I think the last time I flew in and out of Gladstone would have been in a, a dash, um, probably the 300 series. I remember flying a short 360 into, uh, flying in one, not flying one, flying in one. Uh, that's how, that's how long ago it was, folks. Qantas Link used to have the short 360s to do milk runs up the Queensland coast. Anyhow, we are, I think, ready to go. So we've got blue levers forward, red levers forward. We'll get the black lever moving forward soonish. Flaps are set, trim looks good. I think all the switches are in the right place. We've got heading bugger line, we've got local barrow set. We've got that bastardized GTN 650 in the GNS 530 box over here, which is kind of handy, I like it. The so first waypoint is eight miles away, that'll be cool I think. We've got a right turn after departure. Uh, yeah, all right, we don't need to worry about any radios and shit. Transponder is transpondering. I can't remember what the speeds are in this aeroplane. So we just make it up? He normally does, I hear my audience say. I can break off, bringing some juices in. Ooh, nice sound. A bit more juicies. You go full juicy in this thing? We are going to. Oh, nice. Sounds all right, this aeroplane. And we get airspeed alive and all that. We're going to be airborne pretty, pretty quickly, aren't we? Feels like about 80-ish, 85-ish, I reckon. What do you reckon? Will she want it? Does she want to go? Into the breeze? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A little bit sluggish there on the rotation, perhaps went a little early. That's alright, we'll retrim. Back on, uh, get ourselves on the runway heading. 100 knots, don't have any gear to worry about here in the Islander. Yeah, she took a bit of, a bit of pulling to get us off the ground. Might have been a little bit, uh, a little bit sheepish on the pull, eh? Never pays to be sheepish on the pull when you want to get going. Know what I mean? You can interpret that any way you want, folks. Up through uh, 500, I think we'll try to make a, a right turn around about uh, now. I'll come back on that manifold and then back on the props, back into the green. Hey, green is good in aeroplanes. I found 100 knots climbing out. Oh, yeah, not real great. We'll get rid of those flaps. That might help us. Around the corner we go towards Calliope. Quite in balance, mate. I love the old steamy gauges, I've got to say. Every time I get back in a steam gauge aeroplane, it's a, a nice relief. Something about it. Maybe it's easier on the eyes. For me, anyway. 700 feet a minute, going alright. 1,000 feet now. Put a roll out around about there. We'll align the heading bug. Get Georgie doing some flying, because I want to spend some time in the external view, looking out. Exploring the Dawson Highway. We might go autopilot. What does Georgie want to do? Just hold the pitch. That'll be good, Georgie. Heading hold for now. Be nice. Now, are we in heading mode, Georgie? We are. Vertical speed. You're holding vertical speed. I'm happy with that. I'm through one and a half. All good. Uh, 
Uh, we'll zoom in over here. We'll intercept that magenta before too long. Yeah, I want Georgie doing most of the flying, folks. And she's got the old par avion. Hey, delivery, the par avion. It's an Aussie rego. Par avion. Do they fly down in Tassie? Victoria? I can't quite remember. Anyway, there's a shot of Gladstone, folks. Beautiful Gladstone, the port of Gladstone. There she is. Coming back inside, that'll be the highway. We should be able to intercept the uh, nav before too long. We've got a nice uh, easterly breeze blinds that will help get us to Springshore quicker. That's through 2,000 feet. We'll go uh, nav hold Georgie if you just want to make a gentle right and then a gentle left. And then back to the left, mate. There we go. Right on cue. Have us truck on the highway, Georgie. You're doing well, mate. Calliope ahead. Folks, I'll see you at various points on route. It, uh, it won't be uh, too long of a video for you to suffer through. All right, we continue westward. Just uh, just coming up to Mount Alma, where the next little um, patch of population in front of us there, 12 o'clock. This is what you see out here, folks. Lots and lots of, of brown. And if I was... I was flying you IRL in the Islander, where well, you'd probably be seeing a bit of brown of a different kind. <laughs> well, one of the one of the many one of the many um, bits of uh, sparkling wit that I used to inflict on my first time passengers IRL. So there's two people that ask, what do I need to bring to go flying with you, old man? And so you only need two things to get on board. One is a lot of cash, and two are some brown pants. And now the cash bit they can understand. The brown pants had them scratching their heads for a little while. Just some of the, yeah, some of the, some of the charm, folks, that I used to bring to passengers' lives. IRL charm that I now share with you, the virtual audience. I think I'll next see for an approach into um, Mount won't be too long. All right, so when you start seeing big gashes in the landscape, like that, you know you're getting close to uh, to Mara. So once we get to our next waypoint, which will be the little town of Banana, Queensland, we'll begin to descent. And then Mara North is sort of just on the other side of that gash. Technical term, folks. Flight's going pretty bloody well, I must say, the aeroplane. I like this aeroplane. I don't know why I don't fly it more often. Too many aeroplanes. That's the problem, eh? That's the problem. Yeah, but it's going uh, going quite well. Getting along the ground about 140, 40 odd knots. We've had a tailwind all the way. It uh, has been a little stronger than what it is now, but um, we'll take any tailwind we can get at this time yeah and I must give a shout out to a very kind uh, viewer who uh, made a comment in a previous video about uh, questioning what my turbulence settings may be and that kind of prompted me to have a bit of a bit of a look um, and I've changed my turbulence settings uh, reduced it one level from whatever it was which I think was realistic to whatever the next level down is is it medium or moderate or a bit, I, I can't remember what the actual label is, but the level down from realistic, and I find it, um, what am I liking? The little dog doesn't. <laughs> so just uh, making an approach, I think we've got a southeasterly facing runway here at uh, Mara North, it'll be a, a thin, thin strip, three miles from here, we're kind of, Maneuvering for a base, a base leg. At this time, down to 90 knots. Very stable. This aeroplane to fly. Feels like it's got a bit of, a bit of weight to it, as well. Oh, no. So we maneuvered for a. We'll call that base. And we'll be looking out this window for a, uh, a pretty thin but. Um, 
long enough sort of strip for us an hour north. Shout out to the residents of uh, of Mauer if you happen to be, be watching. I, I don't imagine I've got many viewers out here but um, I'm always surprised by who pipes up occasionally and how they how they come to see these these videos the uh, the algorithm in its in its wisdom how it works true mystery of the uh, mystery of the universe there we've got some um, some buildings out here I'm going to guess that that is a strip and we'll take first stage of flat gears already uh, already down it's been a long time between drinks flying this one folks so I'm going to ask for some forgiveness in advance looks like a strip down there right I'm going to call it a strip I'm heading towards it if it's not a strip well, <laughs> well we're going to land there anyway actual designated landing area optional this video folks. We've kind of straight off the highway a bit. Have we got a strip there? Yeah that's a strip. Yeah that's a strip. Mara North, here we go. Now we're under uh we're in the white arcs, we can take all the flap we want. Blue levers forward, red levers forward. A little bit of juicy to get us there. What I'll do is make a landing here in Bower. I have a have a bit of a spell, a bit of a smoke, eh? Put a muzzle on the dog. Only joking, folks. <laughs> but I definitely am going to have a bit of a break before I continue the journey towards uh, towards Springshaw. I might try and catch up on what's happening out there in the Premier League as well. All the overnight news. I saw something pop up on my YouTube. Might be worth a bit of a look. We got all the flaps? I think we do. Here we go, folks. Mara North runway. It looks like runway 13 or 14. Close enough. We do have a headwind, which is always nice. Here we go. Don't get too slow, fella. A bit of a flare. A bit of a flare, fella. Oh, we landed a bit firm. Anyway, we're on. She pulls up nice and quick, doesn't she? Beautiful. Here we go, folks. Welcome to Mower North. I'll taxi back towards those hangars, and uh, I'll see you in a little bit for part two of this trip along the Dawson Highway. All right, so part two beginneth. Kingy, I was very remiss not to give you a shout out in the uh, the opening the opening segment. Please uh, accept my apologies. Why are you in the, the second row, Kingy? What's going on? Did, uh, <laughs> did you hear me say that I was going to get the muzzle out? You decided that, oh, I don't like the sound of that. No one could muzzle you, Kingy. You were, you were uh, muzzleless, muzzle free, muzzle resistant even. But anyway, nice to have you on board as always. So folks, I so, um, managed to park us alongside a couple of other lighties here at uh, Mara North. Took a spell, checked up on what's happening in the Premier League. Um, mm, well, a couple of teams are getting the wobbles there. If you're an Arsenal fan, you'd be worried. If you're a Liverpool fan, and I know there are Liverpool fans that watch these videos, um, you'd be a little bit concerned. A couple of losses this week. Um, yes, Man City, Manchester City, start to uh, look like the favourites again. I've been watching the documentary, actually, uh, the treble thing, together, treble winners or whatever it's called. Might um, talk about that en route. Anyway, part two, folks, beginning here in Mara North, we're heading to Springshaw. I'll get us started and uh, we'll get on our way. All right, let's uh, let's do it, folks. Everything good to go. Checked our trim. Yep, our flaps are good. Lights on. Transponder. Fingers are crossed and sphincters are tight. Bringing that juicy in. A little bit more juicy. Releasing the brakes. 
Away we go, Kingy. Nice light headwind for us. We'll rotate a bit closer to 90 this time, see how we go. And we'll give it a we'll give it a decent pull this time around. Nice and stable here on the runway. There's 80. There's 90. Decent pull. Yeah, that felt better. Decent pull always makes you feel better. No gear to worry about. There we go, folks. Easy does it. Easy does it up through 90. Come back on that manifold a little bit. Back on the props. Get rid of the flaps as we make a right-hand turn towards our next waypoint. Waypoint number 10 on this uh, on this journey along the Dawson Highway. We'll see you somewhere on route, folks. Uh, it won't be a uh, a long long journey from here to Springshaw. We're about halfway halfway there. Yeah, we'll see you somewhere on route, and then we'll uh, we'll shoot an approach. Job done. All right, settled uh, nicely in the cruise on our way to the little town of. Bohinia. Not too far away. Dawson Highway there on our on our left. I'm really enjoying this. Like I don't imagine that there's gonna to be too many people interested out there in the flights in content viewing world. Probably the only the the faithful will uh, give this one a look. We pick up a few hundred views and Full of likes, that sort of stuff. That's all right, folks. I, I make the videos anyway, <laughs> and uh, I hope that someone gets some, some of you get some, uh, some entertainment or escape from it. Perhaps some education. Occasionally, throw in some education. Well, let's educate myself as much as you, the audience, folks. Um, from, uh, do learn a lot. Or what I find is that I'm tapping into learning or knowledge that's buried deep. Um, and flying a, a simulator somehow enables me to, to access it or to make connections with other knowledge. So I'm getting a little bit deep here, folks, my apologies. But um, yeah, that's what I, I enjoy. I'm going to keep making videos as long as I enjoy it. Um, I was. <coughs> I was reflecting in recent times. The channel, to be honest, is not doing terribly well in terms of the numbers. Um, really, if I was a, if I was a numbers man, I'd probably give it away. I think the, the views are way down, the likes are down, the dislikes are up, the subscriber count is, well, at best, plateaued. <laughs> if I was looking at it purely as a numbers thing, I'd probably yeah do something different um, but that's not how I look at it um, I really appreciate those of you that uh, not only support the channel but seem to enjoy the content it is appreciated um, I mentioned as we jump back inside to make sure everything's going all right <laughs> yeah doing about 130 or 134 Indicated 154 of the ground, so we're doing a little bit better on this um, second second half. That's good. Four and a half. Everything going pretty well. I mentioned earlier that uh, been watching that um, documentary on Netflix around uh, Manchester City's uh, season, last season, the treble season. Incredible achievement, the treble. Um, and I'm enjoying it, kind of. I'm not a Man City fan. I'm a I'm an interested observer. Of the Premier League, but and there's part of me that has a, I guess, an interest in understanding what the success is due to, and it's a number of factors. But the documentary, I find it a little bit difficult to watch because the way it's edited. Is it just me, or uh, is modern editing in these sports documentaries like there's a cut every half a second? It's really difficult to follow. Like, I found myself, I've watched a couple of episodes, and I found myself going, can we just hold this shot? Just stay on this guy and let him speak for more than two seconds before cutting away to this and cutting away to that. It, it 
it's just I don't know. It's um it's difficult. <laughs> I like a long form documentary, you know, with long shots. <laughs> long shots in terms of shots that are held in one in one location for a while. Um, I don't need the jarring, but I guess it's modern modern editing. I don't know. An interesting documentary to go behind the scenes and love Pep Pep Guardiola's uh, emotion, his passion. I love I love that bit. Anyway, folks, um, just some random shit that I talk about on these on these videos. <laughs> Probably why the numbers are going south. <laughs> Needs to shut up a bit more. And with that in mind, I will shut up now, folks. I'll see you for an approach. We'll be uh, landing at our destination of Springshaw. In Springshaw, ahoy, folks. It's the highway underneath us, weaving, out, weaving its way through the range. And then Springshaw is about 10 miles. It'll be the town. If you squint hard and use your imagination, you'll see a town. That'll be Springshaw through there. Now, you should probably think about a, um, a descent and give Georgie the rest of the uh, the day off. Thanks, Georgie. I'll do it. At, uh, the pilot ship from here, champ. Start that journey down to Springshaw. So now, what we're looking for is a strip that's kind of between the town and the racetrack. Remembering the old VFR cross country days. <laughs> You're looking to place landmarks in relation to other landmarks and oh well that's kind of where the strip's going to be you, you cross your fingers you pray to whatever celestial being you happen to believe in and you hope that by the time you get there you've you've guessed correctly <laughs> kind of how it is remembering the old um you know ppl days you're doing those doing those navs, particularly the solo navs. You, know, you don't have the instructor to, to call upon to give you some words of advice or to ask you the question that'll kind of prompt you to rethink things. You know, you've got to do it by yourself and they send you off on these what feels like really long journeys all by yourself. We didn't have any of the fancy bloody navigation equipment. Sort of dead reckoning stuff good fun look back on it now with, with a big smile on my face at the time shit and bricks <laughs> I have thought about doing a series on the channel sort of recapturing those days you know um, the navigation elements of the PPL here in Australia which is kind of the second half of the, the license and uh, I've thought about it a few times and I've I don't know, there's part of me that would kind of, I like to leave it where it where it was, very special time in my, not just in my flying career, but in my life, and I kind of, I don't know, I, I might just leave it there, do you ever feel like that? There are certain memories in your life you kind of, you can replicate in a simulator or some other form, but you, for whatever reason you just decide, nah, I'm just going to leave it, I'm just going to remember it as I remember it right now, and just that's okay kind of kind of like that so there's the town of Springshaw we've got what looks like a racetrack there and then we've got a strip so we do have a cross strip I think we'll probably choose to land towards the south so we'll fly overhead the town four miles to run I, am, I know I am a little uh, a little on the high side that's okay unfamiliar with the uh, the airport Stay a little bit higher. That was the uh, old adage. If you had to sort of, you know, circle the airport or do an orbit or something just to get yourself sorted, well, that's okay. Going to cost you a few extra dollars in fuel and whatever. And the residents will probably be wondering what you're doing, but if that's what you needed to be sure, to be sure, to be sure, well, that's what you need to do. Now, yeah, I'm guessing that, that's, I think it's runway one, it's going to land to the south, it's sort of more of a southeasterly, it looks like runway one, one, two or something like that. We're going to have a bit of a crosswind. 
Pretty steady easterly breeze blowing the whole way across today. Yeah, so that runway is the longer one. Overhead the town of Springshaw, Queensland. I just really enjoyed this. <laughs> Have I said that before? I enjoy myself. I keep doing these videos as long as I enjoy myself. And then when I stop enjoying it, if I stop enjoying it, or if I kick the bucket, whichever comes first, then the videos will stop. Yeah, down through 130 knots, there we go. That's a nicely spaced circuit for mine. Pretty lonely airport here at Springshaw. We've got one lighty on the on the ramp by the looks of it. Yeah, there is going to be a crosswind. What happens out at Springshaw? Does anyone know? Fellow Australians, particularly fellow Queenslanders, what do they do out here? What's the industry? What's the go? I've certainly heard about Springshaw, but I don't know why I've heard about it. <laughs> what happens out here? If you can help an old man gain some new knowledge, I would appreciate it. Just uh, slowing ourselves up a little bit. I think we can take a stage of flap as we as we kind of turn, just losing sight of the uh, sight of the strip a little bit, of course, which is never a good thing. Where's the strip? There we go. We'll just keep the turn coming around. I think we'll take uh, a couple of stages of flap. Come right up on that juice. Mixture can come in. We'll just keep the turn coming around. Hope that we roll out somewhere on a heading towards. That's pointing towards a runway, hey? Have we gone through it? No, oh, there we go. Bit of luck, folks. <laughs> it helped back in the PPL days. <laughs> it's still working for him. Anyway, come right off that, uh, right off that juice now. We need to get, need to get slowed down, retrim. She feels very heavy in the hand. Right off the juices. Trimming, don't get too slow, fella. Getting heavy in the hand now. Real heavy in the hand. A little bit more juicy to get us there. Okay, there we go. Off the juice. Let's make this a decent one, eh? Hey? Float it out a little bit. Float it out. Come on, float it out. Softly, softly, softly. Soft enough for me. There we go, folks. We'll be able to get off here at the... Uh, Cross strip by the looks of it. Nice, folks. Welcome to Springshaw. Thank you for your uh, for your company and another video. It is uh, very much appreciated. This has been a trip along the Dawson Highway in Queensland, Australia. And just for one final time, can I say I've kind of enjoyed it, folks. Until we next meet, you stay well, enjoy your simming, and bye for now.